Matt Cedillo. And we are live. We're live. Okay. Okay. We're live. We're joined this hour by uh, Ryan, aka Sneaky. Um, really, really, really excited to have you uh, with us this hour. Um, now, Ryan, uh, you are uh, a hip hop artist. You are an organizer of events. You've been a part of uh, many different like artistic collectives that put on all kinds of things uh, in the in Southeast LA. Um, you've done just a number of things all across the uh, for and uh, with the community and you know, you're an all-around uh, great artist and, uh, and producer, and, and you've, you've also been conducting a series of interviews as well, I've noticed. So um, I want to get into all of that, but before before any of that happened, I want to talk about your early days. Like, when did you first uh, get into hip-hop? When, how, how, did that, how did that journey begin for you? Uh, so I used to be in, like, a revolutionary hardcore ska band, and uh, when the band kind of, like, broke up and split, um, I started getting into DJing. And it was really like house music and underground raves and like trance and techno and all that stuff. And uh, there was a point where, um, you know, I was on the microphone doing the DJ and so pumping the crowd. So I kind of got that MC experience of like, you know, trying to keep the party going and like, you know, uh, engagement and all that. And uh, there were a couple of times throughout my whole life where I had been freestyling and kind of doing rap battles, not really taking it serious, but um came to a point like 2009 going into 2010 um my dj career or whatever the hell was not going anywhere and um uh musically i wasn't you know doing any of the live performance stuff and i was kind of just craving something and uh hip-hop was there you know i had homies that were making beats i had the studio i had a lot to say a lot of things that I had had on my chest, you know, uh, life experiences, uh, political ideologies, all these, like, I'm a thinker and thoughts and talks and everything kind of just culminated in this way where, you know, music, hip hop specifically, I was able to like do it in a big way again and bring it back into my life and kind of just start telling my story. And uh, 2010 was like a transformative year for me. I took off a semester from ELAC and, uh, I worked six months putting into this record, you know, my first record collaboration. Um, actually, no, it wasn't collaboration. It was called the Sneakiness EP. So we're about to celebrate 10 years of like the first recorded thing I ever put out as a rapper. And uh, it was just like a little three song demo. I put together a live band. And, you know, uh, in June of 2010, I performed for the first time as a hip hop artist and pretty much been doing it ever since. So tell us a little bit about um, um, before we get into more of the stuff uh, in your hip hop uh, career and just different venues and different you know, different places you played and how how that uh, has played out for you. Let's talk a little about the ska band. Tell tell us about this this hardcore ska band you're in. So uh, I'm a trumpet player originally. Um, I started off playing in the marching band uh, because I couldn't. Um, play drum line I wasn't a good snare player <laughs> so they were like you got to choose a different instrument so I, so I chose trumpet and uh, uh, when I changed schools in uh, my freshman year you know marching band was not really what I was trying to do and uh, mariachi wasn't really my style so I started playing jazz trumpet and uh, had a really cool hippie former you know a uh, uh, <laughs> like a former drug addict, alcoholic, like now 100% sober and just always talks about like how crazy his life used to be and how he's glad he's alive and not doing drugs anymore. And just like dropping knowledge about um, jazz and culture and history. So I, I really got into playing jazz trumpet. And um, at the time, uh, my brother was working with the Allen Theater over there in Southgate. And so I started uh, promoting and selling tickets and kind of like getting into the ska scene and the punk scene there. And um, I played trumpet and there were a couple bands at school that were looking for trumpet players. And uh, I think like in the first year or two, I, I must have played for like 10 different bands <laughs> until finally, you know, I uh, joined uh, La Pobresca and we were, you know, we, we did that for three, four, five years playing. Um, Allen Theater, we played uh, the Vault, Long Beach, the, we played at the, the Key Club, the Roxy. So we, we, we played some pretty big venues and festivals and stuff at, as a band. So that's kind of where I got a lot of my uh, first experiences, stage performance, being in a band, um, promoting, booking shows, how to do 
you know, setting up equipment, breaking down equipment, all that stuff I learned in those early band days. So, so when you were, when you're working in these, um, when you, when you, um, when you're working in this band environment, right. Were you like nervous or, or were you, did you feel like discomfort and like, you know, you know, you can do and you weren't necessarily front man or, or how, how did you feel when you were playing the trumpet? Uh, I was actually like a really wild, energetic uh, trumpet player. I actually set like the tone for a lot of people in the scene thereafter. I used to like jump off of stage and get into the crowd and I, you know, when I wasn't playing, I would be doing backup vocals and, uh, you know, the horn line, we had our own like little dance moves. So we were kind of coordinated and then we would do stuff with other members in the band. So uh, the live performance was always dope. And I think, um, just to, like to get deep for a second, I think psychologically I was always like craving attention, which is why I think I gravitated towards performing arts. So uh, I don't think I was nervous and stuff or it was just more like excited and like happy to be there and just trying to be like, you know, just trying to get noticed, trying to get seen. Yeah. So, you know, like what I want to talk more about, I want to talk about your career. I want to talk about the things that you've done and things you're getting into. But like it's also like an opportunity to give some people some advice out there. So for those who do struggle with stage fright, like who struggle with like, you know, they're, they're very talented, but they, 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 they get nervous, right? And they, and they know they're talented, but they, they freeze and they lock up. What advice do you have for people? Because you don't seem to suffer from that. What, if, what advice do you have for people to avoid freezing and locking up like that? Well, I think uh, the biggest thing to do is practice, you know, um, not just your your instrument because obviously the, the the more comfortable you are with your instrument and your songs and your parts and so that your mind is not having to worry about that part the more you could just focus on like having fun and being more in the moment so I think make sure you practice and you know your parts you know your instrument and also like practice uh with your instrument moving around you know uh like I do a lot of envisioning like like pretend that you're in front of people you know or or uh for something, someone that needs actually like more practical practice, I mean, start small. I mean, one of the, one of the ways, well, I, for any kind of performer, I feel like you have to do lots of performances, whether you're um, trying to get over stage fright or whether you're trying to just promote your music and promote your art and just be seen and recognized like performances and live performances or now, you know, virtual, virtual performances, live streams, all that stuff is super important to build. Um, not just your confidence, but your following. So I would say, you know, start small, like plan your own little shows with you and your cousins or you or your sister, like play for your parents, you know, play for your friends. If you have to like start small or, you know, just start trying to book more stuff and getting more in front of people. Cause I think there's always going to be that little sense of nervousness, excitement, anxious feeling. It's never going to go away, but the more you were able to work through it and, and that you're comfortable with it, like comfortable in that uncomfortable feeling and just like knowing that you've been there, that you put in the reps, I think a lot of that, a lot of that helps as well. What was it like transitioning um, just, just in terms of you, in terms of how you felt uh, from, from being, you know, um, a member of a band to being like kind of the focal point? Like, you know, I understand that like when you're playing trumpet, you, you did kind of set the tone where, but like from going from, you know, being one of the guys that tone to being like the show, like how, what was that transition like for you? It was difficult, man. Um, it's like, uh, stage presence and, um, entertainment, like just watching a performance and when you have a band and there's a lot of people going on and there's like a lot of movement, you know, you have like the drummer constantly and, you know, guitar solos and the sounds are switching dynamics. Like, for a, for a show wise, it's a, it's very engaging, entertaining, entertaining, but when you're by yourself or you're just you and a DJ or just you and a beat, um, it's definitely way harder to command that same presence in that same space. So I had to get used to being even more like, energetic and more intense and more crazy so it was like taking what I was doing as a trumpet player to another level but on top of that um just for you know transparency's sake I was never a really good trumpet player so like <laughs> it was it was easy to just like you know in a big band where there's like a lot of things going on it was easy to like not play or fuck up or not be super on point and just kind of cover it up with the stage presence but if I as as the rapper artist's main like front man um 
I couldn't do that. So I had to make sure that even if I was crazy and energetic, that I was never out of breath, that I still had breath control, that I wasn't screaming, that I was like in tone and pitch. And I think all of that extra stuff was really more difficult than being in a band and being able to just be like, oh, there's so much going on. It's easy to get distracted, easy to easy to get lost in the, in the minutia and the sound, you know, of everything going on so that people don't really pay attention. But when you're the front, you have to like be super on point and you still have to be energetic and put on a good show and make sure you know where you're at and know your parts. And then even when you have the band, sometimes I'm telling the band when to change. So even if I'm getting too crazy, I still have to make sure like, yo, we're going into the hook right now and do that whole like motion. So it was definitely a lot more um, awareness, self-awareness and, and, and just awareness of, trying to be entertaining that I didn't really have to worry about when I was just like stage right, stage left in the back part of a, a, you know, a horn section that I could just kind of get lost in and just be visible when I wanted to. I was kind of like always, everybody's always watching me. So it's like even more important. It's almost like when you're doing that horn, when you're in the horn doing that kind of stuff, you're almost like a comedic relief. I mean, I'm not that, you know, like, not that as a joke, but it's almost like you're like the thing that cuts like the, like, oh, there's a horn guy going great. Like the hype man, right? You're like, you're like, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. environment exactly. of like fun and excitement. And then you can pop back and like go back in the cut. And then you pop in and where, but you're not like the front man who's like, it's gotta be almost like the straight man. Almost gotta be like the, the guy that like kind of like holds it together. And it's like, oh no, this is, this is still a show here. You know, like, and like, and then yeah. you pop in, ha, ha, ha. And then you pop back out. But when you're, when it's you, it's, that's a, it's a different, it's different. It's also like the, obviously like, I know you're, you're sober right now, but a, a lot of people in the entertainment industry, we, you know, we like to drink and party and, and, and rage. And, uh, you know, when you're the trumpet player in like a seven, eight piece band, you could probably get a little bit more sloppy and not have anybody notice, but the lead singer, you know, the lead guy being too drunk to like perform or, or, or too hot, whatever the hell to be able to execute is way more noticeable. So there was even that where like, you know, I had to change my lifestyle a little bit because it was like, can't be all rock star. Woo, we got to be a little bit more on point professional, especially if I'm trying to do this with longevity, you know? You're muted. <laughs> Still muted. There no, that go. makes absolute sense. That makes absolute sense. So let's move into uh, to some of the, 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 the actual accomplishments as like a hip hop artist. What are some of the what are some of the things that you've uh, you've managed to do um, with uh, with the uh, you know with your artistry? Like, what what are some of the venues you've played as a as a hip hop artist? Um, I mean, most recently, and I guess most notable, at least locally, was uh, the Sellout Arts Festival. You know, and I was able to um, I was able to perform there uh, right here in the, down in the river. You know in my neighborhood in the heart and, and I was also on the committee planning it and all that so that was the Stella Arts Fest is probably one of like my most grand achievements um recently but with my band in the early days uh or at least in the in the middle period um when I was still rocking with a band uh pre-UC San Diego um we had been invited to rock on Pacific like at the street fair I've done um uh, Walnut Florence Street Fair as well. Um, I actually used, I actually, while I was at UC San Diego, I was also performing and using my DJ skills. So there I was able to play and open up for, you know, huge acts. Um, Slick Rick, uh, fuck, um, oh my God, I'm blanking right now. Uh, Kalani and Pell, uh you just uh, just a but i could just name drop right now and it wouldn't really matter but it was really dope to be able to play like at a university um in these big you know uh rooms with lots of people and opening up for you know internationally touring artists and stuff um and just really all over la locally right like even like dive bars i think some of the coolest stuff that i've seen is like scenes you know the hip-hop scene just kind of blow up in like these little venues and dive bars where kind of no one expects live music to happen so that's kind of been one of the coolest things that i've seen like locally hip-hop wise is just you know people throwing shows and and really taking over these spaces um but yeah i mean my the coolest thing i think for me to have done music is just how it changed my perception on what i was capable of and just like my creative potential and 
going on to actually, you know, use that in my um, application to get into university and then being able to go to university and continue playing and performing and creating and then, you know, graduating, getting a job and then moving back and being able to kind of just pick up like I had never left and just establish this whole lifestyle. Now, I think all of that is just kind of you know, something that I look back on in awe and think of like, if I would have just been able to talk to my, uh, my 15 year old self and just been like, yo, man, just, just stay on it, you know, Don't, like, it's gonna be cool. I think that dude would probably been tripping out at everything we've accomplished. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's really beautiful. Um, I ran into a little bit of issue just right now. So we're gonna have to like, cut the show right now. And I'm gonna come back with you in like, two minutes on a different service, because um, I shared this with the rest of the DAW Center where I'm the literary director. And the big boss has a meeting right now with like, like some like state officials. So we're going to be back in about two minutes, everybody. About two minutes. We're going to get part two of, of, of the sneaky interview. All right. Sounds so, good. Okay. Peace.